Okay, and uh, greetings and welcome to the Educational Rounds at Seclair, where every week we take a topic uh, related to health and wellness, uh, correlated to psychiatry, mental health, and explore that topic. I am uh, Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair, and today I'm joined by Emily, PA student, and Maura, PA student. And today what we're going to be discussing is the effect of chronic stress on health. Uh, who isn't who, who isn't stressed out today? And uh, unfortunately a lot of it's through our own making. However, uh, what this stress does, it creates some significant medical issues and also some mental issues with individuals. So uh, Maura, could you possibly tell us a little bit about uh, stress and what it involves in, in the body? Sure. Um, I focus more so on how chronic stress affects the body um, in particular. So um, stress is perceived by the body as a threat and so similar to it, as if a dog barked at you, your body kind of goes into uh, defensive measures. So the hypothalamus will signal to the adrenal glands to produce both adrenaline and cortisol. Um, adrenaline kind of bumps up the heart rate, uh, blood flow, whereas cortisol will increase glucose and um, other forms of energy for the body to use. Um, usually the stress, um, stress is regulated uh, by the body and you kind of go into fight or flight and then rest and digest, but someone who is in a state of chronic stress, they're always in that amped up uh, fight or flight uh, response. So uh, the different systems that this can affect health-wise uh, include the heart, uh, digestive system, um, it can increase your risk of asthma, um, obesity, and even the risk for um, starting to smoke in, as a response to stress. Um, some of the long-term effects are uh, heart disease, so with the increased heart, or increased heart rate and blood flow, as well as the uh, constant release of triglycerides and cholesterol, that increases your risk of heart disease. Um, like I said, asthma uh, is also uh, more prevalent in those that are under chronic stress, and diabetes in particular is also an issue with someone who's in chronic stress. Um, I also kind of looked into the link between chronic stress and um, poverty, and those in poverty have a tendency to uh, be in more of a de declined health uh, status, and um, hypertension, diabetes and anxiety are all uh, things that are prevalent in those that are in poverty, most likely due not only to environmental genetic, environmental and genetic issues, but also the stress that being in poverty puts you in. Well, thank you, Maura. You've done an excellent job on that. And don't be offended at this. That's just awful. <laughs> so tell me, tell me, Emily, what do you have? I have how chronic stress affects the brain or what's happening in the brain. Scientifically, we all kind of feel these things when we're in that state, but what's going on? Um, different areas of the brain have different functions. So patients who are with stress disorders, such as PTSD, may have alterations in their brain connectivity. Um, for example, there's a stronger connection between the hippocampus, which is responsible for memory and emotions, and then the amygdala, which is that fight or flight response, responsible for that. So the fear is more rapid. We have these emotions, and since this connection is stronger, um, we're feeling it more quickly, and the fear is happening quicker. Um, we may also, there may also um, be a cause, a weaker connection between the hippocampus, the emotions, and the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for helping us moderate our response. So we have these emotions, we feel something, and then we should be able to calm it down. But because um, the connection is weaker, we can't do that. Um, another thought, another thought is that there is different um, cells being produced. So there was a study done on rats that found that there are less neurons which um, process and store information and they're being replaced with myelin producing cells which um, are, accelerate the speed at which the message happens. So the timing and with normal communication is also impaired and we have difficulty with learning and memory. Wow, excellent. So, and also involved in stress is cortisol. So what cortisol is, is cortisol is produced by the adrenal glands which sit right on top of your, right on top of your kidneys, which is, and cortisol 
in its own place is a wonderful thing. It's the fight or flight. It uh, let caveman run away from uh, from saber tooth tigers. Uh, however, when we get caught in that yo-yo, in the fight or flight syndrome, or get stuck in one or the other, uh, that cortisol keeps pumping out into our bodies and creates the the circumstances and the symptoms and the and the ailments that uh, Maura and Emily have described to you. Uh, what also what what stress does, what cortisol does, it can, can create core core body fat also. It can inter, interfere with the way you metabolize uh, glucose. And uh, people normally people who are under a lot of stress have uh, a little tendency to be overweight. So we've uh, we've talked a whole lot about the negative aspects of stress. However, we're here to tell you what to do about it. What what can we do about it? What can we do about it? Well, here at Seclair, we take a holistic view of the individual. We take a mind, body, spirit. When a person comes in with stress, we just don't write them a prescription, send them on their way, wish them a happy day. Uh, isn't that something when, when you're at a place and everyone wishes you, have a, have a good day, have a good day. Well, here at Seclair, we try to assist you to have a good day and, and show you ways that that can be done. Um, so we look at everything that's going on in an individual's life. One thing that's associated with stress is is, you, is a person exercising regularly. Uh, do they do they have a mindfulness practice? Uh, do, do they ever have a particular or an appropriate form to vent their to vent their form to vent their anger to vent their sadness to vent their happiness to vent their grief? Uh, when I when I saw an individual. Uh, uh, today, Emily, that yep. uh, that and this individual uh, is holding a lot of grief in, yep. holding holding a lot she of is. grief. And today, that uh, that person said that this was the first time that she's actually talk, so. been able to talk about it. Yep. Been able to talk about it. Another thing that uh, people do is surround themselves with supportive friendships. Who are your friends? Do you have people that love you? Do you love people? If you do. You're a fortunate individual, indeed. Another thing that they do is they get enough. They get enough sleep. Uh, and one of the huge things that we deal with here at Seclair is helping people uh, disconnect from technology. Uh, what we do is when do we need to be constantly connected? Do we need to have all that information constantly? Uh, when we're constantly tuned in, when we're constantly plugged in, we're living lives other than our own which can lead to a great deal of stress, a great deal of anxiety. Uh, and are we, do, we ask ourselves, step back and be the observer behind that stress, be observer behind that anxiety and those thoughts. Uh, how much are we participating in this drama? How much are we participating in the drama around us? Uh, your life is simple. We just are experts at complicating it. So right now, what we're going to do, we're going to uh, do a little, do a little psychiatric first aid, a little psychiatric first aid. So I'm going to ask Emily and I'm going to ask Maura to blow this balloon up. And oftentimes, when we're not participating in these type of, of practices to relieve and deal with stress and anxiety, these they can blow up and become pressure, pressure, more pressure, more pressure, and more pressure. Do you ever feel like you're you're ready to pop? Do you ever feel like you're ready? To be a balloon, and I'm going to ask I'm going to ask Miss Emily to uh, to what happens when somebody reaches the reaches the breaking point. There we go. Did you ever blow? Did you ever did? Did ever someone ever say to you, "I feel like I'm ready to blow. I feel like I'm ready to blow." Well, uh, perhaps with a little bit of psychological first aid, perhaps with some exercise, with some mindfulness practices, with surrounding yourself with friendships, disconnecting yourself from technology, uh, building on building on small successes, um, being being getting in touch with yourself, uh, not participating in the drama around you. Uh, so what I'm going to do is ask Miss Mora to place to place these type of these type of tools and these type of skills. Which we're going to uh, use as tape over over the, the balloon. If you make a few uh, a few crosses over that, that'd be super. So what we want to do, we want to provide ourselves with the skills. The uh, the drama in life is going to keep on coming. The speed bumps, the potholes, the uh, dead ends, the wrong turns are still are going to keep on happening. How are we going to be able to deal with them? So. Rather, and here at Seclair also what we do is not only assist people in skills, but unlearning some old thought patterns and behaviors that perhaps didn't work out so well. A lot of them in the past certainly did. So what I'm going to do is ask Ms. Moore to insert that pin, and hopefully something not 
unless it doesn't happen, and it did. So, however, then that that means that those skills were not applied properly, and perhaps perhaps those skills were not honed uh, to the degree that, that 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 they need to be. So, uh, perhaps uh, at the next time. What we'll do, we'll have Miss Mora practice these skills <laughs> and incorporate those in her life, and perhaps next time that balloon will not blow up. Uh, so we're glad that you, uh, we're certainly glad that you joined us today. Uh, every Monday we come out on a, a broadcast in Seclair. Please feel free to uh, to visit us. We're still on, and this is the this is the wonderful and the miracle and the joy of being uh, being alive. So what we're going to do now, we're going to ask both uh, Miss Mora and Miss Emily. And they've sharpened their skills considerably since since we last uh, did this exercise. So we're going to take uh, some skills. And we're going to use some extra skills. We're going to really use the ones that we've developed and work very hard on. And where's the beginning? That's great. I'll rip some off for you. Can you explain what you're doing for the people on audio? For the balloon. Sure. For for the individuals out there, what we've done is blown up a balloon. However, uh, when you've reached that breaking point, when you've reached that point ready to pop, uh, what we what we do those uh, those particular skills, those particular suggestions that we've mentioned earlier, uh, what we do is we. We use those skills on our lives. We use them as a buffer. We have a we have a tool belt, and we use those skills. And what we what we do is we learn to respond rather than react to situations. We identify and we label overwhelming emotions without reacting to them, which is which is part of mindfulness. And some of these uh, anxiety and distress skills involve involve self soothing involve some self-soothing skills. So what we're doing is we're soothing ourselves, we're, we're still ready and we're still tense, and we'll just see what happens. Uh, life's, life's a challenge and life's an adventure, so we'll, we'll see what happens now when these pins are inserted into uh, the balloons where we have ourselves covered with the skills. And I'm ready for anything. Oh. And that would be up. However, Miss Emily's did not. So, uh, so today you've learned that we need to practice our skills, and we have to continue to practice them. So uh, we can accompany that with a, a person that was chopping down trees, chopping, chopping trees, pound, pound, pound. A person walks past and says, do you think you might take a few minutes and sharpen your axe? Axe, and the person said, how can I? Look at all the trees I have to cut down. So we're all, we're all glad that you joined us today, and uh, I had a good time. I hope you did, too. So what we can do is ask Miss Mora to give our ending. Yes. yes. So Clara, hang out outro to continue the conversation. <laughs> Please like us on Facebook. Plus, us on, on Google Plus, or follow us on Twitter under Seclara Life, and keep an eye on any of these for our next time recording. Mondays around noon to ask your own questions. And one of the one of the common skills we use for individuals uh, that maybe have a little heavy does it is perhaps don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> How seriously are you taking yourself? And you can see that uh, we we follow that maximum about not taking yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll give you our prescription: uh, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your TV. Uh, and perhaps go fishing, and as my friend Sven says, uh, for some real mindful fishing, fishing practice, fish without bait. Be good to yourself. Until next time. <laughs>